Welcome back to this final installment of the Quimby Pro CNC router build. To keep myself on track I have a small cheat sheet here. And to start off I'm gonna list what I've done since the previous video. Uh, to start off I've finished the cable routing. I don't know how well you can see this from this angle but there'll be some close up as well. So I finished the cable routing, all the cables come from the main machine. Both from the C axis and the X axis, down through the cable chains, along the front here and into the electrical cabinet. Uh, I've also installed some cable channels both in the front and underneath here for the uh, dual y-axis motors and I've also finished up some cable routing inside the cabinet both the USB cable for my breakout board or well it's an Arduino Nano and also just cleaning up the routing of all the other cables a clean electrical cabinet is a happy electrical cabinet remember that I've also leveled the machine and just to postpone any comments about it not being level I didn't actually level the machine, uh, I leveled the rails on it, so I used a carpenter's level, the best spirit level I have, to make sure that the, the right and left side of the y-axis linear rail are completely parallel. I would have preferred to use an engineer's level, but unfortunately I don't have access to one and they're kind of expensive. But that would definitely have been a better choice. But even so, using this regular level should give me more than enough accuracy. I also finished up grounding the entire machine. And in Sweden this is called Potentialutjämning. And this basically means that I connect all the external parts of the machine that are made from metal to a central ground point. Or a star ground as I believe it's called in English. And this has a couple of different reasons. First of all, if I for some reason have a short circuit out on the machine. Instead of actually having a machine part that's conductive and might be, well, in my case 36 volt DC or 230 volt AC which might actually fry me if I touched it, this would actually cause the main fuse to blow. So it's a safety precaution from that aspect. And also it's to prevent any noise in the electrical system. So having the machine properly grounded will swallow electrical interference and actually prevent some parts of the machine from malfunctioning, such as limit switches. And grounding is especially important if you're using any AC circuits in your machines, for both of these reasons. I also calibrated the machine to make sure it cuts completely square 90 degrees. And the way I did this was I took my best engineer's level. I think it's it's not a zero grade, it's a one grade, so plenty good enough for what I'm gonna use this machine for. And I used a dial test indicator and ran it back and forth, first along the y-axis to make sure that the square was parallel to the y-axis rails. And then I ran the x-axis back and forth while adjusting one side of the lead screws until I had almost zero runout. We're talking like between 5 and 10 microns of runout over 120 millimeters, and that's plenty enough accuracy for this machine. I also calibrate how far it moves. Unfortunately, I didn't get any video of this, uh, but the only thing that consists of is actually telling the machine to move a certain distance, and then checking that distance, and then recalculating the steps. I know that both Mac 3 and Mac 4 have certain applications to do this automatically. I just did it manually. It's not that hard. So now I'm gonna list some pros and cons of this machine, this entire build. And to start it off, I wanna have a small, uh, well, brasklap, small disclaimer. Uh, I only bought the mechanical kit. I didn't buy a full complete kit with both the spindle and the electrical components, only the mechanical kit. So my review will be of the mechanical kit and not of the complete machine. Although it's 90% the same, so just be aware of this. Now these are in no particular order, so let me just read it up from the top here. All the components were included, nothing was missing and nothing was broken. And I have heard some mixed reviews about Bulkman 3D as a deliverer, but in that regard I didn't have any problems with it. Everything was delivered and everything was in good shape. And I didn't need to buy any extra components to be able to finish the build. Uh, the assembly manual for the main mechanical kit was really complete. Now, the translations from probably Chinese to English, they were iffy in some places, but not too bad. They were easy to follow along to, and like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I think it was part uh, part one of this series, all the labels and all the bags of all the fasteners, all the collars, all the bearings, everything, corresponded really well to the manual, so it was easy to follow. I have a separate point here for quality of the plates. Now, I did say that the overall delivery was good, but I have heard some reviews and heard some people talking about the plates being bent and also the holes not being properly countersunk. Now, my plates are completely straight. I checked them all, there's no bow in them, all the holes were drilled properly and countersunk. So, no worries there. 
the rails also separate point on quality the rails were really good quality i have had some bad experience with linear rails from china before uh, let me see if i can find one because i think i think i saved one of the worst ones so here i have an mgn 12 linear rail slightly smaller than the hgh 15s on the machine and from a completely different supplier now and i don't know how well you can see this But, if you see here, that's a crack. And the same here in the end. And this was delivered as a premium product. Also from China. And I did get a replacement for this, but still, that's, uh, it's kind of bad ship something like that. So I was pleasantly surprised about the quality of the linear rails. And they might not be a real high wind. But they are damn good copies, or at least second assortment from Highwind themselves. I'm not really sure, but they look really good. I also checked them with the dial test indicator, and they are straight. Uh, I do know also, the same thing as with the plates, I do know some people have had problems with the aluminium extrusions not being tapped properly in the end. And every single aluminium extrusion was both cut the exact length it was supposed to be, and all of them were tapped. Now, there were some ships left over. Or I shouldn't say some, there were a lot of ships left over from the, the drilling and tapping that I had to clean off. So it would have been nice if they actually cleaned them off before shipping them, but overall that's a minor problem. Also, one of the main reasons I bought the kit was the price. And that is still really good. Now this is the 1000 by 1000 mm Queen Bee Pro mechanical kit. And the price of the kit itself was I think 624 US dollars, which is really good for a machine of this size with linear rails. If I were to source the same machine here in Sweden or close by, we're talking at least twice that. And that's without controller and spindle as well. But of course there are some cons as well, and I have a short list of some stuff that really bothered me. Now there's nothing too bad here, but still, it's worth mentioning. I mentioned this in one of the videos as well, but the fasteners. Now, almost all of the screws were made from grade 1A Chinesium. They were the softest screws I've seen, I think, in forever. Now you could destroy the allen keys in them just by looking at them wrong. The only screws that were of decent quality were the, I think, M4 screws used to install the linear rails. They were decent, but all the, but all the other ones, all the button head screws, all the cap head screws, really, really bad. And, and honestly, they wouldn't have had to pay that much more for good quality screws and it would have made the experience so much better. Now, I did buy a couple of things except the mechanical kit. I bought the bracket for attaching the router, and I also bought the cable chain kit. And on their website, this cable chain kit is listed as being made for this machine and the work bee, which is almost the same machine but without the linear rails. So I think it's really weird that the assembly instructions for the cable chains were only for the work bee. That's kind of annoying, since it actually didn't fit on this machine. So I don't think they should say that it's for this machine, they should say it's a universal kit that can be adapted for it. And also there were no chapter anywhere in the manual and the assembly manual for the mechanical kit is the same as for the main one, it's on the website. Uh, there were no mention anywhere of how to install the limit switches. And when they sell a complete machine, all the limit switches and all the electronics are included, so there really should be brackets and installation instructions for the limit switches. And now. You can put them in the wrong way, especially if you're new to this and haven't built the machine before and if you buy a complete kit with instructions, they should assume that you might not be really familiar with all the CNC mechanics and all the components. So there should be instructions that show you how to install the limit switches and hardware to attach them to the machine. There really should be, like there's no way around it. Uh, but I made up my own ones and I'm planning to 3D print some new ones as well and replace all the mechanical switches with the inductive sensors at some point, I don't know when. Probably when I do a control systems upgrade, which uh, I've kind of already started planning for, but that's, that's a different chapter. Just as I mentioned that the price of the mechanical kit was one of the pros, the shipping cost was one of the, the cons. Because the shipping cost was almost the same as the mechanical kit. Now we're talking $624 for the machine and we're talking around 500 US in shipping costs. And that's really expensive, but I can't blame Bulkman 3D for that, because that's basically because of the pandemic. But still, it, it kind of sucks that the shipping cost was that much. And also, one of the things that I'm least happy with in the, uh, in the mechanical kit are the threaded rods here. And I am 
kind of foreseeing some problems with the plastic nuts. Now, if the plastic nuts are made from Delrin or uh, what's it called, uh, acetyl plastic, they should hold up fairly well. But if they sheeped out on the plastic, which I, I can't really say if they did or not, the plastic nuts are gonna break sooner or later, and I'm not really happy with them. So I am planning to make a ball screw upgrade of this one. Uh, so I'm gonna go either for 12 mm or 16 mm ball screws on all three axes. Or maybe not all three axes, but at least on the uh, the X and Y axis that are longest. The the C axis might be fine, but the uh, but the X and Y axis definitely would benefit from real ball screws. That would improve both the accuracy, the speed of the machine, and lower the failure points of it. And uh, yeah, that's actually everything I had listed on my small sheet sheet. So uh, now we're going off script. And first of all, let me just say that the attention this series have had have been way more than what I thought. Like, I'm talking about that the views I've received in the last four weeks have actually been ten times what I've received in the previous year. And that's saying something. And I'm just a small guy making stuff in his garage and seeing the interest and seeing all the positive feedback have been phenomenal. And I'm extremely excited about this. So a big thank you to all of you out there, it's really truly amazing. I also had a comment on Facebook about adding some links for all the stuff I used in this build, so if you check down in the description, there will be a full list of everything I used in this build, or at least everything I would recommend you to use. And looking ahead to the future, I am planning quite a bit of stuff with this machine. First of all, like I said, I want to upgrade the ball screws on the X and Y axis. I'm also planning to upgrade the limit switch attachments, like I said. And in the future, I don't know when, maybe quite soon, maybe not so soon, I want to upgrade to a 2.2 kW water cooled spindle and a frequency converter so I can actually control the speed from my CNC program and not manually. I also want to do a control systems upgrade on it, because right now, all I'm running as a controller is my PC and Arduino Nano as a breakout board. And I'm communicating over USB, which is kind of slow and prone to failure or interference. Uh, so I want to upgrade to a system that uses Ethernet, and that is more stable and can run at higher frequencies. Uh, so here I'm talking either like uh, Eding CNC, Acorn controller, or Linux CNC. And all of these systems have one thing in common. They have modes for auto-squaring the Y-axis gantry if you're using two Y-axis motors. So that means that we have two limit switches, one on the right side, one on the left side. And you set up separate home offsets for the limit switches, which means that every time you home the machine, you automatically square the gantry, which I can't do right now, so I have to do it manually. That's what I'm thinking about right now as far as the machine concerns. I also have around, I think, up towards of 10 projects I want to make with this thing. Uh, and the only thing I need to do before doing that is installing a spoil board, which I haven't bought yet, but that shouldn't take too long. And of course, like always, if you like what I'm doing, if you want to see more of it, uh, leave a comment down below, like the video, subscribe, send me an email. And if you have any suggestions for future content, any videos you'd like to make, any subjects you'd like me to cover, please let me know somehow, either down in the comments or send me an email. I'll be happy to check it out. And there might be a bit of a hiatus after this video until the next one, because basically these last seven weeks have been kind of hectic getting all of this put together and getting all the videos up and getting the machine up and running. And I have quite a lot of stuff around the house that I've put off for for a bit too long, to be fair. Uh, so right now I need to focus on that, but I'll be back soon with more content, more projects, more machines, more builds. And uh, till next time. Why are you still here? The video's over. Check out these ones instead.